What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And you are tuned in to another episode of Poor Minds. Where a drunk mind speaks sober thoughts. What's up, girl? Hey, girl. We finally home. Girl, finally. Lord have mercy. We was gone for so long. Yes. Like, okay, so. I was so happy to sleep in my bed last yes. night. Yes. So, to give y'all just a little rundown of everything, we went to Nashville. On my birthday. On your birthday. You had to work on your birthday. Then, it was fun, though. Yeah. Because the, the pop-up shop was fun. We had a pop-up shop. We had a Nashville. pop-up shop the next day. The pop-up shop was fun. We had went out to eat mm-hmm. that Friday when we got there. Which was an experience. Which was a very interesting experience. Shout out to Bunny. Yeah, shout out to Bunny. It was very, okay, so us. it was one of those dinners where, like, they bring out this, like, plate that's very intricate and yes. nice and modern mm-hmm. and the food like this big. Yes. It's like this big. But I'm not gonna lie, we had like 12 of those dishes come out. It was out. just some interesting stuff that yeah. like came out. Like we had this one um, appetizer, mm-hmm. I guess you could call it, where it was like oysters with dipping dots on it. Yeah, it was And we on. did so many episodes in LA. I don't remember if we talked about this already. No, we haven't. We, we haven't? haven't? No. Okay, we didn't talk about it? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, cool. But yeah, so it was like, that's interesting because I mean, that's a combination I would never think to try. Yeah, it was a really cool concept, but I'm not gonna lie, like after having the twelve like the twelve plates, like we was by the the end you're really full, even though the things were really Mm -hmm. small. And not only that, though, the only thing that was missing was they didn't have none of the entrees and didn't have no beans. And the only thing that was missing for me is they ain't had no motherfucking hot sauce. Like, yes. I ain't got no hot sauce in this bitch. Remember, she brought me some little pepper flakes. Girl, I need sauce. <laughs> she needed the sauce. I was looking for the beans. You was looking for the hot sauce. That was the only takeaway. I'm about to start being on my Beyonce shit. I be saying that all the time, but I'm really about to start carrying, like, the little hot mini sauce, bottles yeah. of Tabasco or something in my purse. I don't think you need a mini. I think you need the regular Well, you know, sometimes I be having a little mini purse, so... Oh, bro, I, that Balenciaga bag is literally this big. Did you see Jordan had posted it talking about... I think Dre and Nicole has the smallest purse ever, and he put um a hookah tip on the side of it. I think the hookah tip was taller I am than dead. the purse. Yes, it's very, very small. And that little G-Bunchy purse. Why do you like little mini bags? I like, like mini bags. Uh, they be cute to me. I feel like I don't need nothing in there no way. Because yeah. I ain't paying for shit. I know that's right. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's nothing but, yeah, but the, lip gloss. The LA trip was cool. We definitely got a lot of work done. But like I said, we went to Nashville, then we went to LA, mm-hmm. then we went to Houston, and now. We're and at home. least you came home first. Yeah, though. I, but I was home for one night. You came, but you came to Atlanta for one night. Mm-hmm. I literally went straight from Atlanta. I mean, not Atlanta, straight from LA to Houston mm-hmm. with all my fucking luggage, and we had them big ass fucking. <laughs> check Bro. bags that we had to check and carry-ons and purses. It was a lot. It, it was, was just too much. Lot. Like, I'm so happy to be home mm, and I'm too. never checking a bag ever again. I hate checking bags. You know, that's crazy because people be like, um, I like to check a bag because you just check it and leave it alone. But no. I like to get out the airport ASAP. Like, yeah. and then we so fucking young. What? Y'all know me and Dre is stupid. What happened? We put all our designer stuff in our carry-on bag just in case I check it. Because y'all ain't about to catch me slipping. <laughs> I said, baby, you can take all that Fashion Nova, but this Louis we, is saying, oh, man. We can replace the Fashion Nova in a pretty little thing. <laughs> The bitch, Bro. this Chanel and she's staying on me. Stop playing. They would open that bag and had nothing but Goodwill and fashion yep. over this. Not That'd Goodwill, like, bitch. <laughs> That'd be like, who been thrifting in this motherfucker? <laughs> me. <laughs> but yeah, LA was cool. But it was fun, yeah. though. Yeah, but after a while, I was definitely ready to go. I was tired. Yeah. So this the time is, change kind of was fucking. Oh, with the us time too. change was fucked up. Like it was crazy. But besides yeah. that, I have a quick story. So, this morning, I woke up, and I was just, I don't know, I was just kind of dragging this morning. Mm -hmm. Like, I slept very, very long last night. So, you know when you sleep too much, you just kind of wake up and you just be like, whatever. So, Mm -hmm. I woke up this morning, I did my makeup, and I just really wasn't feeling my makeup. I really wasn't feeling my hair. I was just, like, having a day. Went to Target, whatever. So, remember when I told you, like, we could not find a beauty supply that was, like, in our area that we really liked? Yeah, you had told me the name of one, but I've never heard of it. Yeah, okay, so it's called Sora Beauty Supply. If you're in Atlanta, make sure you go to this beauty supply. It literally has everything. Sora? Sora, yeah. So, it's off of Ponce, Pont Street. Okay. So that's it's not that far. So mm-hmm. anyways, I like this beauty supply because it's giving bad bitch. It has like the bad bitch lashes. You gonna have to the send gr- it to the me. good makeup. Cause you know how sometimes you go in the beauty supplies and they don't have what you need. You know, they got like the basic mm-hmm. bitch stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like 
it just was some of them they just don't be giving they still got the dr pepper lip gloss and shit bitch i'm looking for the not the dr <laughs> you, you remember the dr pepper the stuff i do i do but this is a good beauty supply so anyways i always go to this beauty supply every now and then you know when i need stuff so i let my lashes fall out because i'm giving them a break so mm -hmm. i had to go get some lashes and some other stuff what happened to your lily lashes you got in la girl all right. Oh, exactly. <laughs> we had a time in Houston. <laughs> I'm going to just leave it at that. Anyways, so I walk into the beauty supply and um, a lady, I guess she, I think she is the owner. She walks around the counter. She was like, are you Lexi? I said, indeed I am. <laughs> She was like, oh my God, I love you. I listened to the show. Yes, it was so random. It was so random. She was super sweet. She was like, I've been waiting for you to come in my store. I said, well, I'm going to be back, boo. Yeah, Period. no. And you know what's crazy? I immediately thought like, oh, Andrea, when you get your lip gloss line, you should have like a meeting with her to see if she'll, because I'm pretty sure store. she'll like carry it. That's so a good be, idea. Mm, it'll be a Sora Beauty Supply exclusive, huh? Yeah, it's like, I think we're kind of at that point where like, it's hard to go places and people don't recognize yeah, us. Because yeah. you know, I went to Houston for my best friend Jasmine's birthday mm -hmm. and we went to this concert on Friday genuine and jagged edge I'm dead you was all in genuine <laughs> girl no so everybody so it was funny because Tahir Tahir's here today y'all we missed him <laughs> so Tahir had DM me and he was like damn that nigga in your lap <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, honestly, some of his sweat dripped on me. Cause we were and you liked it. No, I did not. Cause we were in the first row. So I mean he was like super close to us. But anyways, at the concert, I ran into like three listeners. Mm -hmm. And one of them actually was like recording me and my friends and yeah. stuff and had posted it and was like, hey, Dre and Nicole over there. And I, mm -hmm. <laughs> I know you was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But no, anyway, so I'm super happy to be back in Atlanta, though. Yeah. I've been tired as fuck, too. Like, you know, I have not recorded without makeup on in mm -hmm. probably, like, two years. But the skin looks years. good. Thank you. But it's been a minute because, you know, I be feel like we got to get cute for work. Mm -hmm. But I was so tired this morning. I just did not have the energy to yeah. do my makeup or my hair. Well, you still look absolutely gorgeous. Thanks, friend. The Thank you. Popping. The skin is skinny. You know, it's summer. We got to. Yeah, that's why I was like, I'm really, I fell off of my skin routine while we were traveling mm -hmm. and stuff. But I'm about to get back on it. But another thing happened. So, Wait. you know, I always stop by, you know, the store and get some stuff before I come here, too. I stop at the same store before we come and record. And like I said, I just wasn't feeling like myself today. Mm -hmm. And I got out the car and this, like, homeless man, he was like, oh, wee. And I said, I know. <laughs> I said, you know what? You still, he made my entire morning. I said, you know what? I still got it. He I said, am dead. He said it so loud. It scared me. I said, who we talking to? Well, who else would he be talking Period, to? Period, because who else? He said, oh, we. I said, I know. He said, I know. He did it back. Or are you lying? <laughs> okay, maybe I lied. <laughs> <laughs> but it made me feel good, okay? So, yes, that's been my day. I had a very interesting day. I'm redecorating my entire apartment. Mm -hmm. So, I have a guy <clears throat> coming to paint um, two of my walls. And I'm just so excited. Y'all know I'm super into home decor. So, I'm really excited to, like, redo my whole place. Like, I'm turning my second bedroom into, like, a little cute office space. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to be, like, doing little vlogs and editing and doing stuff more. Because I'm mm -hmm. really going to work on, like, vlogging for y'all. Because I know y'all be interested in, like, how me and Dre's days be going. What we do when yeah. we travel. So, I feel like once I have a space and somewhere to actually sit and edit, I can really give y'all, you know, some A1 content. So, we working on it. Yeah, we working on it for sure because mm. we've been saying we was gonna vlog. No, a I know, but I'm like, and I we said, suck at fucking vlog. Like, I really do be wanting to be like a blogger girl, but like, I just suck at it. The thing that's hard for me is having a camera out because I'm a moment person. Yeah, I be forgetting like yeah, in the like, moment, and then like if I'm talking to somebody, we have I don't want to be like, yeah. Literally, I know. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, And it's just the awkwardness <laughs> of just walking around with it everywhere. Yes, because I will say, our friend Kiki, shout out to Kiki from Cocktail. She is good at vlogging. No, she is. And, like, she'll have her little thing right here. And it's like, nobody, like, she's just good at it. Like, mm -hmm. she'll just be sitting, like, having her wine with her arm with out. With her arm out, yeah. Uh -huh. And we'd be like, I don't know that's smart. Yeah, we're I'm, terrible at vlogging, but we're going to try to get better yes, this are. year. We so, are. Okay, so now we're going to get into these topics. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, girl. Okay, so for the first topic we wanted to talk about, you know, I feel like we are we are women of a particular age. That's not like we old. We are. But we, we ain't, ain't no really old. We spring chickens now. I mean, we ain't, but I guess normally when people say stuff like that, they be like 50. Mm -hmm. But anyways... 
we wanted to talk about the pressure to have children because I do feel like even though you know I'm only 31, you're 32, mm-hmm. people expect us to have kids already. Right. Right. And not only do people expect us to have kids, when we tell them that we don't have kids, they be like, well, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Like, why don't you have kids? Yeah. Does it, everything work and this and that? And let me say this as well. When you ask people, stop asking people why they don't have kids, first of all, because that's so invasive. It's very personal. Mm-hmm. And you don't know what's going on with somebody's reproductive system. Right. It may be a sensitive issue. So stop assuming that something's wrong with them and they can't attract a man. Sometimes women really have things that are wrong with them. And I don't want to sit here and talk to you about how I can't have kids or how I've tried to have children and I've lost you know a couple of pregnancies like nobody wants to have that conversation with someone. I mean or sometimes in our case ain't shit wrong we just ain't want no motherfucking kids yet yeah. like I can barely keep a plan life alive. is grand life is good yes life and a baby good. right now would just I feel like slow me down a little bit which is crazy because I used to want to have one really bad mm. When I was younger, mm-hmm. but I'm glad mm-hmm. that I don't. Amen. Oh, Lord. I'm glad we got through that stage. Thank you. But, Lord. you know, I might have one. I know. <laughs> um, You mean like a, I don't know. I got to be- meet the right man first. I'm not going to lie. This is going to be shocking to you. Not you, but the listeners. I have decided to have a child. I be new I have decided to have a child. Um, you always been fickle about it. Like yeah. you acting like you, you're not one of those people who was like you used to always be like, oh, I don't want no kids. I don't want no kids. But then when we would really have conversations, you would always kind of like say things mm-hmm. that would let me know, like, okay, she not really yeah. sure. Now Kiki ain't never having kids. Yeah, I don't yeah, think. Yeah. But I think what it was is I had to have a conversation with someone who kind of understood like what parenting looks like for me. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think everybody has a traditional sense of parenting that it's just like, oh, somebody got to stay at home and, you know, and I'm not going to be a traditional parent. I already know that. Like, I decided I'm going to have a kid because in two years, because that's when I feel like I'll be ready and I'll be in a place in my career where, you know, I'm good. And not only that, I feel like I can afford a nanny. Like, I am going to need a nanny. Like, I mm-hmm. cannot. I just can't. And I know whoever... That I decided to have my child with, you know, he's gonna be working and he's gonna be. I'm gonna need a nanny. I'm gonna need a night nurse. I'm gonna need all this. Yeah, I'm gonna need all that. I'm gonna. I plan on having my mom out here or wherever I am. You know, like so. I'm gonna need a full team. Like I want my village. Like I see a lot of women be like, oh, it takes a village. Well, bitch, I'm hiring my village. Like half of them gonna be hired and half of them gonna be my family. But I need everybody there because sometimes mama still got to go to the club. Mm -hmm. So I feel like. But I also think that I'm so glad the times have changed as well because um like in the 80s and 90s if you weren't married by the time you were 21 something was wrong with you if you didn't have kids something was wrong with you like i feel like now i mean times have changed but a lot of people unfortunately still do have their mindset right but for the masses i feel like i mean the birth rate has gone down a lot yeah like you're saying like people aren't having kids because we're people are waiting yeah people are waiting but not only that it's like apartments think about it rent to have a nice apartment minimum seventeen eighteen hundred dollars for a nice apartment who can afford to have a kid first of all nice wear two bedroom for no i didn't say two bedroom you need two if you got a kid well yeah but some of these niggas be having one bedroom apartments with kids but that's another topic (laughs) they do (laughs) that's another topic because why you got a one bedroom what little leroy gonna sleep well girl they don't be making no money so what you think but that's what 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 you think they supposed to do but that's what i'm saying that's why a lot of people are waiting to have children like life is fucking expensive like i cannot imagine having a child right now you know and i do pretty well for myself but i couldn't imagine (laughs) i know this right why why would you do that? Do what? You, get you said it. You get on. You the one who told people. See how she still be lying. Talk about she, when she be like, I got three dollars. I do. I just but asked then we you be borrow, catching you slipping. I just asked you to borrow some money yesterday. Mm-hmm. How you did it? You the one who said that niggas need to call you big homie. They do. <laughs> What is wrong with you? Why would you? Be, say okay, that? first of all, a little backstory real quick. This is off topic. <laughs> But I had tweeted something the other day on Mother's Day and I was like, I'm picking the father of my child wisely because I want cars and stock options for Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. So then some dude, well, it was really a lot of guys that was responding. They was 
<laughs> in an uproar. And they was like, some dude was like, well, why don't you pick a dude that's going to be a great father to your child, you stupid bitch? <laughs> he did say stupid bitch. <laughs> it was mad. He said stupid So bitch. I responded back to him and I was like, I know you ain't getting no money because you too angry. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I tweeted, I was like, it's crazy because the guys that come for me all the time on social media are niggas that I know I make way more money than. And y'all just need to have some respect because I'm really y'all big homie low key. <laughs> Not what's up, big bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I'm really like y'all be calling me. Have some respect. I'm dead. On the internet. Yes, but you be wildin'. How but do anyway, I be wildin'? Because you be cutting up. You be cutting up every time. Mm. But yeah, no, I tell people leave me alone. You know oh. I don't have no sense. Tell them leave me alone. I will. Please. One day. But I kind of like the entertainment. <laughs> But, no, I do feel like the pressure to have kids now, it has gone down a lot, but it's still there. Like, I always look at how, you know, people treat, um, I'm going to use celebrities, for example, like Ashanti, uh, Tracy Ellis Ross. Like, they always put them in this conversation, like, well, why don't they have kids? You know something wrong with her pussy. Oh, and Trina, then, too. And Trina, too. It's like, y'all don't know what these yeah. women have going Like, I hate... I hate those conversations because one, we don't know if anything is going wrong wrong with them internally. So y'all just having these casual conversations trying to get y'all jokes off and y'all don't know maybe something is going on with them or maybe they just don't fucking want kids. Well, speaking of Twitter again, I had seen a tweet the other day and this girl was like, niggas will literally nut in a sock. Literally. So using that as a measure of like if your pussy is good or not <laughs> because you got a kid. Because I hate when people say that they be like, if you ain't got a kid Yo pussy ain't good. Hoes that got kids, pussy ain't good. Ooh. Niggas will nut in anything. Literally. And I seen it. I it don't take much. All you gotta do is it I mean, all you have to do is be ovulating to get pregnant. Right, right. That's literally I it. I 100% agree. So that has nothing to do with your pussy. And I also think they use kids to ma to measure how much of a woman that you are. Like, oh, you don't have those motherly instincts or you're not... Not everybody has that. I mean, and again, it's women with kids that don't have motherly instincts. They're not motherly at all. Right, right, right. So, everybody that's a mom ain't meant to be a mom. Facts. Because I think that they're so used to... Um, when you have a kid, like a woman is supposed to be the 100% parent. So sometimes it's a weird situation, you know, whenever the dad has full custody and they're like, but that's normal mm -hmm. for a mom to take 100% custody. But what if I pop out a kid and I don't want custody? I'm a bad person. Yeah. No, I'm not. You shouldn't have had it. Well, <laughs> shit, you said ain't nothing to say. I don't think you're a bad person, but I do think that's kind of weird why? sometimes. If I don't want, why? But it's okay for a father to not want I don't think custody. it's okay for nobody. I feel like as a parent, when you decide to have a child, you need to take care of your children. It doesn't matter the gender. But why I got to be a full-time? What if I want to be part-time? When I apply for jobs, they give you an option, right? I would like an option. They do, but as a woman, I think it's a little bit different just because you have full control over whether you have a baby or not. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time with dudes, not taking up for them, but like, a dude might not want a baby and the girl still have the baby. Well, why did you have raw sex? That's a good point. So but I'm just saying, if a man, we talked about this on the show, so yeah. you can't act like you got a different position because no, we I'm said saying. that if we said that if a man tells you he doesn't want you to have his baby, you should not have the baby. I agree with that, but but stop fucking these girls raw. If you I agree. slide your dick in somebody raw, you should be like, Is, could this be the mother of my children? Period. At this age that I'm at now, I'm not letting my I raw agree. dick in me that I feel like if I had a baby by this man, would I be okay with it? I agree. But when you get pregnant, you have to carry a child for nine months. Mm. You have at least three months to decide whether or not you want to terminate well, not a pregnancy. The way, not the way shit going now. We that's might not very, have that much very, time. That's very true. <laughs> My kids upstairs like, yeah, bitch. You can't send no more of us up here, ho. <laughs> they happy. <laughs> Yeah, bitch, Roe versus Wade on your ass. <laughs> it is, thanks. Because why are we trying to abolish birth control? Oh, now, motherfucker. Now you're getting into my personal life. Yeah. Now I got to watch CNN. I mean, what even though, going on? And even though we both said on the show that we don't take birth control, I'm just trying to understand, like, why are they trying to get rid of birth control? Like, what is the common goal here? I, there is, there's something underlying that has nothing to like, do with Like, I think it's think population it control. You think so? Yes, they want more of us to have kids. You just said the birth rate yeah. low. It is. But y'all don't want me to start popping <laughs> out these motherfuckers. Be careful what you ask for now, motherfuckers. 
w- once I have a kid, they're gonna be like, all right, let's bring it all back. Plan nah, B, fact. everything. Me too, because <laughs> my head gonna be a fool. I already know. <laughs> I'm weak. But yes, I think that the pressure to have kids is, it needs to be just dialed back 100% to zero. I think we need to stop having these conversations with women, judging them on why they don't have kids. We need to stop policing women's bodies. That's already, like, <clears throat> I feel like if a man doesn't have kids, he's looked at like a catch. Like, oh, shit, girl, he ain't got no kids. I can be his first baby mama. Like, it's a good look. But if a woman's a certain age and she don't have kids, the first thought is what's wrong with her. And I'm just over that conversation. I think it needs to 100% stop. And... I mean, well, I feel like it starts, though, like, I mean, which obviously that's not going to happen, but it starts with, like, the older generations, because I feel like I be getting a lot of pressure from my old-ass family members to have kids. Right. I mean, my mom like, definitely... when you going to have a baby? That is how your family sounds, and they all sound And they be like, and you so beautiful. Like, I mean, I know you can get a man. I'm Why weak. you don't have a baby? Mm-hmm. When you gonna have one, you just turned 31. <laughs> they gonna remind you. The clock is ticking. <laughs> that's what that's their favorite. The clock. The, the, clock the biological ticking. clock. <laughs> and I mean, it is. If we want to be technical right, for right. women, you know, we do have a window, unlike men. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I think people should have children when they fucking ready. Right. And it don't need to be a discussion because at the end of the day, bitch, this is my life. Right. I'm the only person that have to live this life. Right. So whenever people are ready to have children, Children, that's when they gonna have them mm-hmm. or whenever God see fit for you to have a baby that's when you gonna have them right I 100% it just agree. needs to stop being pressured like cause then my thing too is like when people try to pressure you into having children no shade or nothing but a lot of those people be struggling because they had kids mm-hmm. so early right that's that's very very true too, and I don't want to say like. And I know my son is my world. We know my son is my. It's my son. My, is my, my king. son is my king. <laughs> we know Jaden is the real man of this house. <laughs> Jaden just want to color, bro. Like chill. <laughs> Jaden want chicken nuggets. Jaden just want to color and watch Peppa Pig. <laughs> bitch. What are you talking about? Damn, Paul Jaden. <laughs> Jane outside mowing the lawn. She recording to my, my real king. That baby tired. <laughs> no dead asshole. <laughs> That's why. <what I'm> sorry. <laughs> they have to have, hashtag pray for Jane. <laughs> <laughs> bro I am fucking weak but nah for real though like a lot of people who especially people our age they be like oh why they don't have kids or they need to have some babies like but you struggling because you had a baby at 16 or 17 right, or right. 21 or whatever and, and you really wrong, low key I'm sure you love your kid but you probably wish that you were able to live your life a little more and focus on yourself and really reach some of your personal goals that you have for yourself that you wasn't able to mm-hmm. so I mean I just feel like people need to stop being in other people's business. Right. I sum it up. agree. And like, and like the point Because I ain't in your business while you had one at 16. That ain't my business. Right. But that's what I'm saying. Going back to the point that you said, a lot of people are struggling. And a lot of people, we're struggling as a single person, just taking care of ourselves. So I think we just need to put other factors in perspective. Like, mm-hmm. maybe some people just can't afford to have a child right now. Like, honestly, I and feel that like too. I can't afford to have a ch- child right now. Financially, I couldn't afford it. For what I want for my kid and how I was raised and the standards for me, I can't afford a child right now. I can't. And I'm not doing it. So, leave That's debatable, but okay. I mean, like I said, for my standards. For my Yeah, I know. That's debatable. How is that debatable? (laughs) How is that no Bro, my bro, my bro, that nigga, my homie. I hate him. Like if people raising kids with fifty thousand dollars, making fifty thousand dollars a year, that's very debatable. That you can't. Who making fifty thousand dollars a year? I said if people are oh. raising their children, <laughs> making so. fifty thousand dollars a year, that's debatable. That you can't raise your child and they have a good life. I know. I didn't say that. I said for me. In my world, how I want to raise my child, what how I you want to right raise now. Them? Like, I want my, like, my baby got to pull up 16, like, got to pull up or something. Well, I pull mean, up in the whip, some sir. 16, you got a while. I got a while. A while. But even when my child is little, like, I can't be the Louis Vuitton Don and not have the Don Jr. You know what I'm saying? No. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. I got to have my bo- my baby, Louis Dog. I hate when people put their kids in designer. Well, that's you when they be me. When they be, like, super young. Yeah. My because baby, they be growing so fast. I want my baby in a Louis Vuitton pull-up, bro. Like, for birthdays. Like, for birthdays and stuff, I get it. But, you no. know, special occasions, I get it. But, like, every day, drip down. Drip down. When drip, they be growing. Drip or drown. My baby going to be in his first pictures like this. <laughs> <laughs> With a chain on. All right. <laughs> I'm going to make it. She's going to be one of them. I'm going to be one of the moms that's like, has the Instagram and making captions like he made it. <laughs> no. <laughs> My diaper ain't the only thing. Bro, I you. hate that because I seen somebody on Instagram the other day, like a popular person <laughs> who just had a baby. And they kid got an Instagram. And they be posting captions for the kids. Talk about, I'm so lucky. You so lucky that I'm your son. What? <laughs> Period. Period. But I my caption is wild. Solid but that's for my wild son. though. Like, what do people be thinking when they be making Instagrams for that? I mean, it's cool to make an Instagram for your child, mm-hmm. but I feel like posting like you them is weird. That's gonna be me. Cause this baby can't talk. Mm. It can't type. Mm. You gonna be doing it? Hell yeah! I just said my caption. <laughs> you missed it. Mm-hmm. I said this diaper ain't the only thing dripping. <laughs> 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 all right all right what's up y'all it's your girl lex peace and it's your girl Dre and nicole and we are kicking off the for rich or for poor tour right here in atlanta on june 25th at variety playhouse i'm excited oh we outside we outside it's lit they've been wanting us to come to atlanta for so long yeah the home well this ain't our hometown but, but it's our second home it's our home. second home you know what I'm saying? and y'all know we finna put that on. So y'all make sure y'all come dress because the dawn is stepping with it. Period. Not playing. Yeah, so the show starts at 7 p.m. and early arrival is suggested. So if you don't have your tickets, go to poorminds.com right now. Get y'all tickets. We outside June 25th. What's up? The ticket's selling out. Period. Now a word from our sponsor, Better Hill. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And we are here again to tell y'all about BetterHelp and how much we love it. I think a lot of times people experience burnout and they think it just comes from work, but it can come from anything, um, especially now dealing with everything that's going on in the world. Um, if you feel like you're not motivated, you're irritated a lot, you're tired, those are signs of being burnt out. Yeah, um, I personally love BetterHelp because I feel like over the year and a half that I've been using it, it's just really great and refreshing to talk to someone that's very unbiased Mm -hmm. and you know it's helped me a lot with like the grief of losing my dad it's helped me a lot with like anxiety because I get a lot of anxiety sometimes and just also you know I think this new role that we have kind of stepped in with being entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. and being kind of like popular Mm -hmm. like so getting a lot of attention I love having a therapist to talk to who can just help me navigate through all of these different changes in my life Right. So right now you can get 10% off of your first month at betterhelp.com slash poor minds. That's better. H E L P.com slash poor minds. Get you some therapy, y'all. Yes. So, okay. for the next topic. <laughs> <laughs> for the next topic, we wanted to talk about, because I think this is like a really. This is crazy. Something that most people, I think a lot of people don't really know about mm-hmm. this either. So we wanted to talk about BMI and weight in the black community. My mom was a nurse mm-hmm. my whole life. So she always used to be on my ass growing up about mm-hmm. BMI. Like she used to be like, you're, first of all, you're short and you're a small girl. You need to weigh a certain amount. If you get over this amount, you are over your BMI. Okay. And I used to be like, I don't give a fuck about no BMI. But let me define what BMI is first. Yeah. Okay. Body mass index. Body mass index, a measure that relates body weight to height. Mm -hmm. BMI is sometimes used to measure total body fat and whether a person is at a healthy weight. Mm -hmm. Excess body fat is linked to an increased risk of some diseases that include heart disease and some cancers, also called body mass index. Mm -hmm. Index. So... It's just a way to, like, you know, put in a ratio, I would say, Mm -hmm. of, you know, your height and your weight. Mm -hmm. So, I got some um, statistics here as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, we all know that the United States is technically, I want to say, quote, unquote, the fattest An obese country. Very, very obese, to say it kind of nicely. But we're specifically talking about the black community today. 
So, I want to read some facts that's really kind of wild, okay? So, the first one says, African-American women have the highest rates of obesity or being overweight compared to other groups in the United States. About four out of five African-American women are overweight or obese. But, is the, but this is obese compared to the BMI. Yes. Okay, oh well, that makes sense because we be thick as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Can do. <laughs> but they they saying we obese as fuck. Bitch, we think. <laughs> fuck them. <laughs> okay, so let me read the second fact. It says in 2018, non Hispanic blacks were 1.3 times more likely to be obese as compared to non Hispanic whites. Mm. So we 1.3 more times to be thicker than Becky. Shout out to Becky. Because we is, but they be trying to be thick, too. That's why be, they be getting them sculpture shots. Mm. We know. Oh, we know all about the sculpture pool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so read the third one. Mm-hmm. In 2018, African-American women were 50% more likely to be obese than non-Hispanic white women. Mm. Mm. So, I will say this, though. Let me be 100% honest, because I know we like, oh, yeah, we thick, we thick, we thick, and we like to embrace, you know, being thicker, but... I also want to say the reason that I don't really like these charts because the, your size doesn't necessarily mean how healthy you are. Absolutely. So let me say this, and I, I, I don't want to really use her as an example because I feel like people always throw her out there, but I just want to use her as an example because she's the person like I know that is like body positive. Lizzo. Lizzo gets on stage and performs for hours, shaking her ass, mm-hmm. dancing. And these girls that are literally a third of her weight couldn't do that or keep up with her. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. you just because on the outside you look a certain way doesn't mean that you aren't active and healthy. Like, yeah. people's bodies work differently. But I do agree that even myself, we need to get in the gym more, ladies. We do. And it's not all about trying to sculpt your body mm-hmm. or lose weight. It's for your heart. We need to get our heart healthy. Like, your heart is a muscle. Mm-hmm. If you just get on the treadmill for 20... Because I've started doing that. I've gotten on the treadmill since I've gotten back from L.A. And I'm not doing a lot. I just get on the treadmill for 20 minutes. Just get up and move. Mm-hmm. Get get up and move every day. Just for a little bit. Not, I'm not saying you got to go out there and run five miles. I hate the gym. Um, I told y'all a while back I was trying to get into Pilates. I kind of liked it. But I think I need to start somewhere a little slower. So I'm mm-hmm. going to try it again. But we all need to find how we can start moving, doing things that we like. Um, so I'm just trying out different things. But mm-hmm. get up and move. 20, 30 minutes a day. Just get your heart rate up. Like I said, your heart is a muscle. Let's work it out. Yeah, I agree. I do feel like everybody needs to start being a little bit healthier, me included. I was just talking about this when we were in L.A., like Mm -hmm. how I go on like these binges where I'll work out for like five months consistently going hard in the gym and then I just stop for like 10 months. But you know why? Because we measure our... Go ahead. I'm no, sorry. I was Go just ahead. saying, like, but I really need to focus on being consistent with it. Because I think what we do as black women, I can't speak for all black women, but I know myself, I, we try to measure our health on how we look on the outside. Mm-hmm. So I'll start going to the gym, eating healthy, and like, you know, two, three months in, I'm like, oh, baby, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. I can stop. It's not about how you look on the outside. It's about the inside. So I can be on the outside, it. small waist, fat ass, titty sitting pretty. <clears throat> but. On the inside, nigga, you walking up the steps and you can't breathe. Yeah, facts. There is no reason that you should, like I said, I'm not going to lie. It's giving me. When I was leaving L.A. and I'm pulling them bags, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> a man was like, excuse me, ma'am, do you need a wheelchair? I was like. Yeah. No. I'm, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm stopping at TGI nah, Friday's the airport for a little wine. I said, I need them a break. suitcases was beating our ass. That's what I'm saying, but it shouldn't be like that. Like. Any normal everyday activity, if you find yourself being out of breath, move around. You need to get up out the bed and move around. I mean, but it's also just about your daily habits, too. You know, what you're putting into your body. Like, Mm -hmm. it's cool sometimes to enjoy yourself and have, like, a little cheat meal but you can't be overindulging every day every day i feel like you know a lot of people they love to eat like fried foods processed foods drink every day Mm. smoke hookah every day Mm. that's not good for your body you know what i mean a lot of people don't drink enough water Mm. i done been around some people who i don't ever see them drink water Uh i'm gonna keep my mouth shut (laughs) 
And me too. Look, everybody started opening this water today. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Damn, nigga, you right. I ain't sick. <laughs> Take but yes, sip. I done been around some people who just don't <laughs> drink enough water every day. Like, I'm big on drinking water. If I don't do nothing else, I'm going to drink some yeah. damn water. But I want to talk about this next point, too. I'm going to interrupt you. So, it says, people who are overweight are more likely to suffer from high blood pressure, high levels of blood fats, diabetes, and LDL cholesterol, all risk factors for heart disease and stroke. Mm -hmm. High blood p blood pressure is something that actually runs in my family and like heart problems and things. So me being at this age, it's like something that I pay attention to. Like, do you have one of the machines at your house? The no. You should get one of I know. My mom used to have one like growing up and I me used to too. do it. Because my, my dad mom. had diabetes. Yeah, but. Diabetes. And he had high blood pressure. Damn. That's why he had a stroke. Don't touch him. I was talking to him. Damn, it's tripping this <laughs> motherfucker. But anyways, yes, high blood pressure is something that affects our community a lot. And these are things that we never talk about, especially we know how we know our target audience. We know we all bad bitches out here. But you really not a bad bitch if you in the club and why you got high blood pressure? If you're not healthy. And you're not healthy. You posting all these ass pics. The ass is sitting high, titties sitting up, and so is your blood pressure. Why? Mm -hmm. Why? Bitch, you could pass out at any moment. Any moment. But that's things that we need to One pay. more puff of that hookah, your ass could be on the floor. <laughs> exactly. So, like I said, these are things that we need to pay attention to. I feel like health concerns are really at the bottom of our list because, like I said, we feel like just because we look good on the outside, we don't have to pay attention to the inside. Diabetes and high blood pressure affects our community so much, bro. And high cholesterol, too. Yes. Like I said, I just had a little health scare these past couple months. Like, I didn't share everything that was going on. I'm still not. But what I'm saying is I just had a lot going on. Like, you know everything that was going on. And I really had to change a lot of shit because mm -hmm. I'm thinking, like, bitch, I'm fine. Like, I look good. I'm healthy. Like nothing go nothing is wrong with me. Whole time, bitch, my insides is like, bitch, go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. And I, you know? I feel like it's very important too to make sure, like, I don't know why, but like growing up obviously in a black family, like black people do not like to go to the doctor. I and it. I feel like it's really important to get your physical every oh, your yes. yearly physical every mm -hmm. year. And as women too, it's very important to make sure you get in your annual. Right. You know, going to your gynecologies, making sure everything is right down there. But people don't want to go to the doctor and i think it's it's a fear because i think sometimes people be knowing something is wrong mm -hmm. they just be scared to go and get the diagnosis but it's like if you keep living the way that you're living and you're not taking care of yourself and taking care of your body it's only going to get worse i would rather go get a diagnosis and know what's wrong with me so that way i can move accordingly right and health insurance, we were talking, we had a conversation health about Health insurance this. is high. Health insurance is very high, but I don't care what is going on in my life. I'm going to have health insurance. Because like I said, I had something happen to me and I had to go and do all this stuff and I didn't have to really pay for none of it. And when I was looking at those bills and I'm like, damn, if I didn't have insurance to cover this, what the fuck would I have done? Well, one of my friends almost died a few years ago mm -hmm. and she was in the hospital for like two months and she had to get surgery and she has really good insurance from her job. And she still, I think, owes like one hundred and fifty thousand dollars just Ooh. because she had surgery like life, you know, surgery. She could have died. Oh, she was in that coffin. One hundred and fifty. She still had insurance. They put the toe tag on her. I mean, but she had to get, like, I can't remember exactly what she had to get done because it's been so long. Right. But, like, she had to get, like, screws put in her, all type of stuff. So she has to actually go to the doctor every six months or so to, like, make sure everything is. Right. But I think, like, we need to understand our hospital bills as well. A lot of times we get a bill and we just be like, oh, my God, I'm not paying this, whatever. But... A lot of times they don't send that shit to collections. Then your credit gonna then be your credit up. gonna be shot. But you have to realize hospitals will charge you for everything. If you use a plastic straw, fifty. They, they charge. They, <laughs> you drink the water. Oh, that's seventy five. I'm gonna add it to the towel. <laughs> bitch, they charge you for walking in that bitch breathing the air. Yes. Oh, you as soon you, as you walk you in, you pee twice. That a hey. two yeah. flushes. Two dollars per flesh. They really do charge you for everything. That's what I'm saying. So we have to pay attention. Like you got to know, like it's expensive, and a lot of these hospitals are privately owned. So it's not. They're not here to make sure they want to keep you sick. Guess who they can make a, a profit so they off can keep of? Money. Of people who don't pay attention to their health. Us. 
I we are literally making these people rich by not paying attention to what we're doing to well, our bodies. First of all, America is just crazy as fuck when it comes to healthcare in general because we're like the only country, I believe, one of the only countries right. that don't have free healthcare. Mm -hmm. You go to the UK or you go to any British territories mm -hmm. like Jamaica or... I mean, I don't know. It's a lot of places. Right, but right, you go right, to right. any of these places and healthcare is free. Right. Like, I had watched a BBC documentary on YouTube maybe like a year ago and they were asking a lot of European people like what how much do you think it costs in America to have a baby and all of them was like free and when they told them how much it costs to have a kid over here those people were like what the fuck I know you fucking lying right but you know what it is because America is a country that's where we were built on greed mm -hmm. so at the end of the day you have people that work a regular nine to five but they still don't want free health care insurance because they like oh it's going to take X amount out of my check but it's like, y'all don't want the free mind of knowing, like, if somebody walks into your house or stabs you or you walk out of your house and get in a bad car wreck that you're going to be taken care of. I mean, and then even when you go to these other countries, the food itself, like, our food here is just so processed to the point that when you go other places and the food is way cleaner, you, you like, oh, this shit. Or you're like, oh, this shit don't taste right. This no. shit don't taste good. And let me tell you what it is. Because when I went to Colombia, I ain't gonna lie, I was kind of like, mm. this needs some seasoning. <laughs> she pulled out that hot sauce. <laughs> I got hot sauce in my bag. <laughs> but, it's, but the food is very fresh. It's like that in, um, when I went to yeah. like, when I went to Lagos too, we were like, "Oh, we're sick." No, our body. You know, when you eat, you're not supposed to shit a day later. You're supposed to shit the same. You're thing. supposed to like go to the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? Like, so with that being said, like your body, our body is not supposed to hold this and figure out what to do with it and get constipated. Like we're supposed to go to the bathroom. So a lot of times y'all go to these other countries and be like, "Oh, I'm sick." No, you're eating something that's fresh food and your body is processing it like it's supposed to be processed. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of things that these other countries don't have to deal with that we have to. And we as a black community, um, I, we were specifically talking about women, but we have to pay attention. Like I said, y'all don't realize like these aren't government hospitals. These are privately owned businesses. My, if I own a hospital, my business is to keep y'all fucking sick because the sicker y'all are, the more money I make. Yeah. So we have to pay attention to what's really going on and what we're putting in our body. And I do want to talk about this chart real oh. quick. Okay. I was going to say one more thing, like, relating to BMI before you get into the chart and, like, weight gain and mm -hmm. stuff. I think a lot of people need to learn portion control. Mm -hmm. Every time I sit down, whenever I sit down and eat, I rarely ever finish all of my food. And I do. Like, I'm all... Thanks. I need to stop that because I'll be like, <laughs> I finish my plate and I start eating yours. Yes, and I'm she not do. Gonna stop. Uh, yes, I am. You should though. Yeah. But yeah. yes, yeah, so portion control is very important. Like mm -hmm. you're not just because you have all of this food on your plate don't mean you're supposed to eat it. Why you give it to me? Because you only need an, you only need to eat enough to nourish your body. I be nourished. People be trying to eat to get full and they be sitting there gotta unbutton their pants because you bloated now. And that be you. And I'll be like this. Oh. <laughs> and then I'll be mad. But and it's because you ate too much. So mm -hmm. I think portion control is very important. Like yes, I thanks. would really stress that. So I want to talk are. about this height and weight chart. This is actually like the official height and weight chart um, based in America of what you should be weighing based on your height. So we're just going to do ours. I'm going to put the link in the bio so people can look up there is what it's supposed to be. Mm. I don't agree with this chart because, like I said, bodies are different. This is just based off of traditional sense because there's no way I could weigh this much. So I'm going to And not with, be skin and bones. And not be skin and bones because, baby, it's not giving that ever. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm going to be healthy, but I'm still going to be thick. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm 5'8", and it says, for a normal weight for me, it's supposed to be 125 to 163. I weighed one six. I didn't even weigh one sixty three in high school. I'm not gonna lie. Oh really? I was probably like, no. You know what? Let me not lie. I was probably like between one fifty five and one sixty in high school. I was sixteen, seventeen though. Okay, so to be overweight, I would have to be between one sixty four and one ninety six. Okay, that's. I'm not gonna lie. When I was at my healthiest and I was working out all the time, I was like one seventy. Now, for me to be obese, that's between 197 and 256. I'm not going to lie. I'm the biggest I've ever been right now. Y'all know I don't give a fuck. I share everything with y'all. I weigh 203 right now. So, I'm technically obese. Mm -hmm. But I know. But to me, I feel like I ain't obese. I'm just overweight. 
Like, I feel overweight. Yeah. But if I get down to my healthy weight, for me, like, my goal weight always for myself is between 175 and 180. Like, that's ideal. I love my body when I'm at that size. But even if I get down to that weight, I'm still technically overweight. But for my body type, I'm never going to be healthy weight i'm not getting down to 163 bro that's right. not happening yeah that's not ideal for me but that's what the chart says but you can't like be I a said, skinny legend no i'm not trying to be i'm trying to be a thick queen period mm -hmm. but like i said for me the numbers matter so i'm looking at my my blood pressure i'm looking at my my iron levels mm -hmm. like i'm looking at everything on the inside like that number on the scale it does matter to a certain extent for me but i know what my goals are and i'm my own goals so i know where i can get that and i know what i'm doing okay right. so talk about yours yours real quick okay so i don't know if i'm five one or five two but I, the, we'll just say, I, five we'll just two. say five two um so i'm supposed to be between 104 to 135 pounds um so you was for four when you was born. Well, no, for a long time actually, it's funny because when I was in my early twenties, I used to have problems like gaining weight. So I used to like take weight gain smoothies mm. and stuff. Like I used to make weight gain smoothies or whatever. So I was under one thirty five for a really long time, up until really till I moved to Atlanta, mm. and so. Then it says for me to be overweight, I'm 136 to 163. Now, normally, I'm in, like, the 150s. That's where I like for my weight to be. Okay, that's where you This like is be. also the biggest that I've ever been in my life. You're the thickest boss that I've seen thus far. <laughs> Thanks. Well, after you. <laughs> Period. <laughs> so, I, um, right now, I'm 167. You so, I'm, and so, and so, obese is 164 to 213, but I'm actually trying to lose, right. like, 10 pounds right now, yeah. so I'm trying to get back, I guess, into the overweight category. Yeah, which, I'm trying to get into the overweight category, <laughs> but we're both obese. But we're both obese By right American now. standards, we yeah. are both obese. So, I say all that to say, yes, we need to pay attention, but you can't too much go by these charts because, like I said, I will never be 163, and I'm okay mm -hmm. with that because, for me, I think it's all about balance. Yeah. I still want to enjoy my life, but I still need to be healthy. Mm -hmm. So, um, we said all that to say, get on a... Uh, if I was 203, treatment. I would be fed. Yeah. I'm 203 right now. Literally. I but I'm just thinking about myself being 203. Like, but that's the good thing about being tall. Like, you carry weight differently. Yeah, I carry weight differently to the world. But when I see myself, I just be like, bro. And it's crazy because every time I tell somebody, like, oh, I weigh 203 mm -hmm. right now, they're like, where is it at? People say that to me, too, when I tell them how much I weigh. They yeah. always assume I weigh, like, 150. And I'm like, no. They or, like, 140. They seen you naked. It's, one, it's 150 pounds in that ass. I seen it. And that's why I need to lose weight, too, because I was looking at my booty, oh, and I was God. like, dang, that's a lot of ass. Where did that come from? <laughs> Bro, I hate it. Remember that nigga told me? Remember that nigga I used to fuck with? Remember he told me? He was like... You got a big girl booty. <laughs> whatever that means. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was in Houston with my boo. And he he, he said when I first met you, you, maybe you were stressed. Because was like, you was way smaller. <laughs> no, that's how I know I'm getting big, though, because when my butt grows. Because I, yes. I was in Houston with my bae, and he said the same thing. Like He was walking up behind me. He was like, damn, you got a lot of ass. I said, oh. Oh no, but oh yeah. No, but the thing about me, you know, and you know how I am. When I decide I want to lose weight, I be going so I, think I we're be both like, like that. tunnel vision. Yeah, I'm the same way. And I have to lose weight before we have our next live show. Like I'm not playing, which is gonna be next month. We haven't dropped the dates yet. Not gonna lie, next live show we gonna be fine. We gonna be fine this book. Yeah. All right, so now we gonna get into the bed. Hey. The bed. Bow. The bed. Bow. 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 Go ahead, Mom. You bring it in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cause this, cause you the one who prompted me to want to talk about this. Why did I prompt you when to talk about this? When we was in this? LA, and you asked me. You was like, "Did you used to? Uh, what did you say? Did I used to go to sleep in my car mm -hmm. during lunch break?" I was asking if you took a nap. <laughs> you took it too far. <laughs> See, that's why we not here on this. <laughs> we not here. Not here at all. Um, we're gonna talk about masturbating in public. Something that I don't do because I'm not. An unlawful creature. I'm a law-abiding citizen. Um, if you or your partner are struggling with masturbating in public, please call 1-800-I'm-A-Freak. Because why are you doing that? It is. Why are you doing that? 
Dre used to be like, yeah, I'm about to eat my sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Public. Now, <laughs> I have, I I told y'all, and I say this a lot, I have a very high sex drive. I'm not shy to say That's that. That's why I'm surprised you have but, a baby. But, but, I am not so horny that I just can't wait till I get home. But you are very extreme with all of your wants. When you're hungry, you need to eat I'm an right extremist. Now. When you want something to drink, you need a drink right now. Mm -hmm. When you want to play with that monk... <laughs> It needs to be played with immediately. <laughs> <laughs> immediately. Immediately. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm gonna let you take take this. I mean, I it's not like a crazy backstory. But but no, it's not. I don't even want the backstory. I want to know why. <laughs> what do you mean? Why? why? You just said why. I feel like to a certain extent, I am like an extremist. Yes. And I'm also a person where things I have to get what I want right in the moment. Mm. So, or it, or it um affects my mood. So, I feel like, <laughs> you know, it used to be times where I would go on lunch break when I had a corporate job. And, you know, I'd be sitting in the car eating. But not you like, eating tuna and rubbing that tuna. Why, why not rub one out real quick? <laughs> you used to be having one, while we're here. one hand on the sandwich. <laughs> one, one hand, hand on, on that pussy. pussy. <laughs> <laughs> You're a sick bitch. You are sick. But the crazy thing is, I wanted to talk about it because I feel like it's more common than most people... I agree. ...you know, would like to admit because I actually had a co-worker who worked with me at the time. Y'all used to do it together? No, oh. bitch. Wait, no. <laughs> That's too far. <laughs> but no, she had like this little lipstick, like this little bullet or whatever that looked like a lipstick at her desk. And like, she used to use it like whenever she would go to the restroom. We had a conversation about it one time. She was just telling me... That is was just cool. so wild. I think I've And she that. was like, yeah, girl. She was like, this is like my little vibrator. She was like, and it looks just like lipstick. So nobody ever think nothing when I take it out of my purse. Mm -hmm. She was like, I'll just go to the restroom real quick and so how many relieve times? myself. Have Have you done it recently? No. I don't have a job no more. I could be at home. I'm just asking because <laughs> you're, you're at work right now, Dre. Be like... Can we stop recording time here? Bitch, we I work. Gotta pee. Bitch, we work for two hours. If I can't wait two <laughs> That's hours, we'll see how extreme it was. <laughs> no, it's not that extreme, bitch. I used to be at work from like seven to like seven in the morning to like five, Ooh. and then it was. But no, but then it would take me an hour and a half to get home, so I would get home for like till six thirty. So that was like twelve hours. That's a long time. I'm not saying I did it every day. It ain't like I was like, oh, every day let me rub one out real quick. Like I no, every every. <laughs> No, it wasn't like that. But I mean, occasionally, yeah. Okay, so how many times a week do you think you masturbate? A week? Yeah. Mm, probably like five times. Okay, see. So you're like, you masturbate no, more than that. I, I got asked this question you, the other day. I feel like you do it multiple times a day. <laughs> It'd be a rough day. <laughs> Sometimes I got to get it started. Okay. Let's get it started. Y'all thought that was about a party. <laughs> Will I am. I know what you was talking about. Um, <clears throat> it, I, I'm like three or four times a week. Three or four times. But I always say this. Like, if I masturbate too much, I feel like it takes away from my It desensitizes. Yeah, yeah. It, it takes away from my sex life. You know what I'm saying? But, honestly, masturbating in public has never been a thing for me. I did it, I can honestly say, one time. But it was because, like, I was sending somebody a video while, like, I was at work. And it was like... So you did do it. So you tried One to time. shame. So you tried to shame me. And I won't And stop. you did it. Cause it was for somebody else. It don't matter who it was for. Yes, it does, cause you did it multiple times. Bitch, cause I was doing it for me. Not for that nigga. <laughs> You a freak. I'm just I saying. I know she a freak. And, I, and at the end of the day, I mean, to a certain extent, people do inappropriate things in public all the time. That's why nobody can shame me. You hoes done seen pussy pics at work. And have. I, I know. I'm sorry. I don't look. I don't work for y'all. I used to be in a European wax center, butt naked in the mirrors. I know you did. <laughs> I'm like making sure my manager not walking in. <laughs> he thinking I'm posing. I'm just looking for the ops. 
In the back. Not you still had your collar shirt and your tag on. <laughs> no, I used to unbutton it a little bit. I know. So but you I look used like to have a to teacher. Cut, I used to have to cut out my legs and my pants was at the, around my ankles. So he couldn't see it, but I would tie my shirt up. He'd be like, damn. I'd be like, <laughs> and while you was there, while you was naked, you wasn't like, oh, let me just. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> what the fuck? Why not? But why not? You already have. You already being a freako. <laughs> you was already being freaky. You was already being inappropriate in the workplace. You're taking fucking news while you at work to yes. tell your nigga. But you draw the line yes. and rubbing your pussy because it's levels to this shit. Okay, so if so that's wild, if bro. If somebody walks in on you, would you rather be walked in on just being butt naked or walked in on with your legs spread rubbing that? The pen on if he fine. <laughs> All right, we're gonna move on. We're gonna fucking move on. Cause ain't no way, boy. It depends, boy. You need to be in jail. Why? There's no. And way. I did go to jail. <laughs> exactly. For what? fucking in the car. Why are you free? <laughs> is the question. I really America, <laughs> America's system. Not hashtag free me. <laughs> exactly. Pa free Dre and Nicole. No, it's free. It's still free Jaden. Period. <laughs> But we'll include you on But that no, too. I mean, maybe I am mad horny because I really <laughs> did go to jail for fucking in the car. <laughs> Random facts. All right. I was young, though. So, master masturbating in public, it's a no for me. It's a yes for you? Bitch, I will still do it if I need to. All right. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> we still got about 30 minutes. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And we are here to tell y'all about ExpressVPN. If you're a person that likes to, you know, start the internet, order things, or do whatever online, but be incognito mode, we're here to tell you that incognito mode on Google is not really what it says it is. Yes, I love ExpressVPN because people are so nosy. People be trying to be all up in your business. Mm -hmm. I be trying to be discreet. I don't want yes. everybody knowing what I'm doing on the internet. So the great thing about ExpressVPN is that your connection gets rerouted through an encrypted server and your IP address is maxed. Yes, you get a random IP address shared by many other ExpressVPN customers. So that makes it harder for these companies to identify you and track whatever that you're doing online. So if you like me and like to keep your business to yourself, please use ExpressVPN. So you're gonna go to expressvpn.com backslash poor minds and you're gonna get three extra months for free. So if you really wanna go incognito and be discreet, go to expressvpn.com backslash poor minds and get your search on, period. All right, so now we're going to get into this a movie breakdown for today. So I want to talk about this. This is so interesting. We actually referenced this in a past episode a little bit, but we're actually going to get into it. So it's a documentary on Netflix called White Hot, The Rise and Fall of Abercrombie and Fitch. It's on Netflix. I know that was your shit because you used to be with oh, all them white folks. Oh, my God. But you know what's interesting about it is because to actually see the science behind it and what they were really doing. It was interesting. Did you did you wear Abercrombie and Fitch? I mean, I had like a few pieces, mm -hmm. but that wasn't really my jam, you know. Right. You know, I went to school with a whole bunch of black people. Yeah, right. So we was wearing South Pole and Baby Fed and <laughs> Not South Pole. Rock Aware. <laughs> That's what we was no dead ass. That's right. what we was wearing freshman and sophomore year right, of right. high school. So I mean, You're right. We would wear Abercrombie occasionally, American Eagle occasionally, but yeah. So for Abercrombie and Fitch, it we was shopping like, at City Trends. It was like a rite of passage. Like if you didn't have on Abercrombie and Fitch, you were just ew. Like it was disgusting. But the reason I wanted to talk about this because I wanted to talk about. Being inclusive and exclusive. Which uh -huh. was a point they made. Which was a point that they yeah. made. And I hate to say this. Y'all, please don't get mad at what I'm about to say. So, what was the guy's name? Was this Mike Jeffries? Mm -hmm. He was the CEO of um, Abercrombie & Fitch. And what he did is was... He Which, prayed. by the way, he mm. was... He was, gonna a get failed, to, he was a failed CEO right, of failed another CEO. company. Which makes me question yeah. why they would even... Uh, Choose him Thank for that. You. 
Yeah, which makes me question why they would even choose him to try to rebrand this company because that's what they were trying to do was rebranding mm-hmm. because it's been around since, what, 1832, 1892? Yeah, 1892. And it was a whole different type of company and they wanted to rebrand it because nobody was buying the mm-hmm. shit no more. And I say all that to say, well, first of all, I'm going to get into the, the point about Mike Jeffries in a second. But I want to say, the I just, I'm going to be honest right now. People like to feel exclusive. Yeah. You want to go to that club because nobody can get in there. Mm-hmm. You want to buy this designer because not everybody can afford it. And one thing that he capitalized on, and I'm not saying I agree with him, but I, I, get, I get his marketing strategy. Because exclusive is like, once you in an exclusive thing and people buy into that and they want to get into that, you're going to sell out. Because don't get me wrong, inclusive works. Inclusive is, I need to be inclusive because... According to the chart, bitch, I'm obese. Right. And and I'm a black woman. And you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I need to be cheering for the inclusive shit. You know what right. I'm saying? Because I need to be included. Because Abercrombie and Fitch did not include me, bitch. But I was still there being like, oh, I want to be in on this. I want parts. But I feel like marketing on that exclusive market... It works. And it works for him. You know what I'm saying? Like Until so they came out with them Asian shirts. Yeah, it was really bad. Like the things that they used to do that they used to get away with was wild. And then that really highlighted how racist the company was. It was super it was super racist. Like basically they would hire people on what you look like. If you didn't look like them, you would get hired, but you would be in in back in the back doing stock work. You or know you what I'm wouldn't saying? get that many hours. Or you wouldn't get that many hours. Like he was down to a T on what they wanted you to look like. And, you know, the company now has changed a lot. Like they're very inclusive. You know, they have plus sizes now. They have all that stuff. But I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I can honestly say, even me, like, I like stuff that's exclusive. I don't want to be a part of something that everybody can be a part of. I think most people feel that way, though. I mean, yeah, but at the end of the day, when it comes to clothing brands and stuff like that, these days, it's hard to be a part of some shit that's exclusive because everybody getting money. And they're, or if they ain't getting money, they scamming. Mm. So everybody, I see. <laughs> you I'm just saying. So every like people can afford things these right, days. Right, it's right. not like back in the day where oh, if you wearing Louis Vuitton or oh, if you wearing Chanel or you wearing um, I'm trying to think of what else is popular right now. Chrome Hearts Gallery Department. <laughs> like if you wearing this stuff, it's not exclusive right. no more because everybody can afford it. But that's not true though, Drea. You're looking at our most no, people no but you're it, that's we're not okay let me not say most okay, people but because, it's not uncommon it's not as but uncommon it is. okay i'm just being honest because we're looking at stuff from the people that we're around and the people that we see the world is a big fucking place when you look at the statistics of people who can really walk in gallery department and spend five hundred dollars on a fucking t-shirt it's not a lot of people that can do that it's very exclusive that's why it's popular because if you can spend five hundred dollars on a t-shirt that's why you're getting twenty thirty thousand likes i disagree on a- because i feel like it's more so about where people's like what they care about these days because you got bitch who got $500 gallery department t-shirts and they stay in the projects because that's what's important to people right but what I'm saying is uh, not a lot of so people saying, think like that but it doesn't and all I'm saying is it doesn't even matter where they stay because all people are looking at these days is what you have right I can agree with that like people like as long as you putting that shit on you that girl Fed. And that's all people care about. Right. So times have changed. So I get what you're saying, mm-hmm. but it is, but it's a lot of people. Like I know people who don't really got money like that, but they got fucking Chanel bags. They got Hermes slides. They got all of that shit. Mm-hmm. And but I we just me, live in a different time. Like I said, I like being exclusive, but I don't want to be exclusive to the point to where because he was being exclusive based on your religion, your skin color, and things like that. Like to me, that's stupid. To me, I want to be exclusive with women who are like-minded like me like oh you a smart bitch you know how to get some money oh you you know how to hold an intelligent intelligent conversation like you know you know my vision of what you're trying to see like i like that come over here come to death row i like
like shit like that. Like, that's the exclusive I want to feel. Like, that's why I feel like this community that we built with poor minds, because the girls who get it, get it. You a bad bitch, but you smart and you on your shit. Like, that's what poor minds is about. That's being exclusive with poor minds. Now, like, and I feel like we are inclusive, but to me, a bad bitch with money that's business driven doesn't look a certain way. You know no, what I'm saying? Whoever said that. But no, but that's what they were marketing at. That's what I'm saying. They were being exclusive on how you physically looked. You could be the biggest fucking loser in America. But if you were white and had abs and blue eyes and blonde hair, you were Abercrombie and Fitch. Mm -hmm. But to me, for us, it's more about our mentality. Like you you're not gonna be part of the poor crew unless you have a certain mentality. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, the CEO of the company that we're talking about was a white man. And he was a loser and very unattractive. So that's all. And honestly, when y'all get a, in an uproar Facts. about certain things, you got to look at who the information is coming from. Because if you would have looked at that man, he had problems within himself. That man done chopped and screwed his face up for years. And he don't, he don't even, he looks distorted. Somebody in the, somebody on a movie has, or the documentary has said that, um, because they had said something in the in some song. I can't remember what band. I like girls who wear Abercrombie and Fitch. But what like I band was that? I guess I had one wish. Oh, what band was that? I think. Hold on, let me look it up because I can't remember. But that was a bop when I was in school. I'm sure. All right. Because I had never heard of it. You never heard of no. that song? Hold on, let me look it up. No. Nope. I like girls. But basically, they were saying in the documentary that that was the coolest thing that had ever happened to him. Yeah. When the brand had got mentioned in that song. And I believe it. Mm-hmm. But those be the type of people who be like that. I feel like it's the same as, like, trolls that be in the comments. Yeah, I just feel like some of these people, they know how to create. Some people just get lucky, though. And they yeah. create things that just... It was LFO? LFO. LFO, okay. Summer Girls. That's See, I had never heard of the band. It was, it's a group, first of all. Band? It's a group. What's the difference? A boy band, they don't play instruments. They just dance. Mm -hmm. I like girls who wear Abercrombie. So why did they call NSYNC and Backstreet Boys a boy band? Because Justin Timberlake can play an instrument or He two. didn't, though. Senorita, I feel for you. And that wasn't even an NSYNC song. Wasn't that his song by himself? It feels like something's heating up. Can I leave <laughs> with you? <laughs> yeah, late ass. <laughs> Justin just knew he was a nigga in the studio. Bro. Day. I'm weak. I fuck with Justin Timberlake. He said, look how I ate that. He did. <laughs> and, and he used to leave no crumbs. I am weak. But yes, I feel like Abercrombie and Fitch, I'm not going to lie. Like I said, his marketing strategy, I get it. But he went about it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Because now I feel like you can be exclusive because... You know, there are communities of people who are like-minded. It's people who think that me and Drea are dumb as fuck and we don't know what the fuck we're doing and we're stupid. We're just not your community. Over here, if, you, if you're yeah, like yeah, this... Yeah, 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 we pay. Yeah, 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 we pay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to move on. Oh, I was, all fucking nah, that, <laughs> that song just popped up in my head randomly. <laughs> but I will say, I feel like it's it's okay to be exclusive when it's deeper than skin deep reasons like i'm not gonna not be friends with somebody because of their religion or their color of their skin or things like that it was just very very deep and it was just interesting because you know growing up <clears throat> i never felt like the all-american girl because that's what abercrombie and fish they said this is what the all-american girl looks like and i was like damn i'm not that but bitch who does who the fuck to say i'm not it was crazy just because they got sued and then they settled for forty million dollars. Like you know, you dead ass wrong to settle for that amount oh, it was of 50. money. It was forty. Oh, I thought it was fifty. No, it was forty. With the girl? Are you talking about the first one? I was talking about the first one. Okay, okay, okay. Where they had to pay like twenty five yeah, yeah, people yeah. or twenty eight people, yeah, yeah, okay. and then they had to pay seven point five million dollars in lawyer fees mm -hmm. or whatever. You know you dead ass wrong when you settling out of water for bad? $40 million. They paid it and they kept going. They yeah. kept doing the bullshit. Yeah. And what was crazy was it was some black people and Asian people and Hispanics that were working for the company. But somebody made a good point. They're like, you know, if you're an because when the Asian shirts came out, mm -hmm. he was like, I'm surprised. because They were like, there was actually an Asian but person bro, on the But why would you ever think that's a good idea, though? What? 
But the thing is, that'll he, be like us. That'll be like a company making some shirts and putting blackface on it. But what I'm saying is, he made a good point because he said, as an Asian person, if you're in a stuffy room with all these white people and they're like, "Oh, is this okay for us to put on the shirt?" You're not gonna be like, you know what? This is uncomfortable, and I don't think it's a good idea. You're trying to keep your job. It's not a comfortable space, especially during those. I disagree. Those, I mean, you can say that. Because if you fall, I mean, no. no. First of all, you're talking to the wrong person. I'm the bitch who literally used to quit jobs all the time just because it wasn't working for Right. Me. Well, what I'm so saying is. So, I really feel that way. Like, absolutely. If I'm in a fucking room and somebody is like, oh, we're going to make these shirts and we're going to put black face on it. Bitch, no, that's wrong. Don't do that shit. It's no, a bad idea. No, I agree with you. They should, and I quit they should if have. you going to do that. Because I'm not even trying to be working for a company that would do something right, like that. Right, but I'm saying where we were that was in a different time no it wasn't what? it was the 90s that's, it's a different time i mean it was a different <laughs> time but at the end of the day bitch it's still like if you don't stand for nothing you fall for anything and I, no i agree with what you're saying but what i'm saying is white people create these environments that are uncomfortable for people so if this person is getting paid two hundred thousand dollars a year in 1999 and they're like oh is this cool is this cool he's gonna be like uh yeah because at the end of the day he's looking out for self and that just is what it is. I'm not saying that it's looking right. out for self should be you looking out for how your community. I look agree at you with too. you. I'm not saying that it's right, but I understand the point that the guy on the documentary was making. He was like, you know, I'm surprised because he was like, he was saying the same thing. He was like, there's no way that somebody that was of Asian descent was on the board, and they were like, actually, there was. And he was like, what? But he was like, but I get it because these. Boardrooms really aren't meant for you to talk. They're, you're there just so they can meet their quota of colored people. You're not there to talk. You're there so when they write down their documents, they can say, oh, we, we got a nigger on the board. We're, we're, we're right. We're I mean, it's diverse in here. I, but they don't want you to talk. I mean, yeah, facts. So don't ask me my opinion. Because if you ask me, then I'm going to be like, hell no. I don't think we should produce these shirts. Mm -hmm. And I would not want to work for a company that would degrade my community right. of people like that. Right. Like, at the end of the day, I'm still a black woman above anything else. It don't matter how much money you offering me. Oh, you were supposed to raise the fist. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were trying to pounce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we... No, no, no I thought you were won't. trying to go to pound town. All right. <laughs> Bro, oh my God. I'm almost done. But no, I'm just saying for real though. Yeah. At the end of the day, I'm a black woman first. Right. So it's just certain things. I'm sorry. Like, I don't care how much money it is. I'm not going against some shit that I believe in. Right. Like, it's just certain stuff that's just not okay. So that Asian person that was in that room was dead wrong. Money controlling you. Right. No, and I agree with what you're saying. Because if you have a lot of experience and you're good at your job, you can go get another job, especially right. back in those times. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have been hard for that person, I personally feel like, to get another job. Right. I mean, you just never know. But like I said, I agree with you 100%. Them dollar signs, crazy with that money or make a the bitch do. Mm -mm. You said a word with that. I one. did. <laughs> okay, so now we. Oh, but anyways, like before we get into the mob, <laughs> uh, White Hot: The Rise and Fall of Abercrombie and Fitch on Netflix is fire. Uh, so now we gonna get into the bop. Hey, the bop. Ow, the bop. Bow, bow, a bow, uh, bow, bow, bow. Not you locking it up. That's the best thing I ever invented. It is the lock it up. And if anybody else ever fucking try to say that they invented it, you're a liar. Lock it up, bitch. Lock it up, lock it up. That's it. We need. I need to start doing that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do. Okay, so my bop of the week. It's a song by Jack James. I'm guessing that's how you spell his name. He spells <clears> it <throat> different. He spells it J V C K James. It's a song called Hennessy Tears. the The title is self explanatory. This is such a good vibe. Like one thing about me, I love to get drunk. And listen to some good music and just be in my feelings. So this is like the perfect song for that. He's like, our honeymoon phase, you took my hand to the ocean. Like, what? Because that's how I be feeling when a nigga, like, you first meet a nigga, y'all in our honeymoon phase. Mm -hmm. Like, I love that. So basically, this song is just about, like, that good drunk feeling of a girl or a man mm -hmm. sweeping you off your feet. And, you know, just taking a shot, getting drunk, and having those Hennessy tears, baby. Because one thing about me, I'm going to cry. Me cry too, right unfortunately. Which I feel like will probably surprise people, but I could be crying. 
I mm. like. All right. All right. I do. I, that you should. I love a good cry. So yeah, Jack James, Hennessy Tears. He's an amazing artist. I really fuck with him. So yeah, y'all go check that out. Go ahead, girl. Wait. <laughs> so my mom put a week is Churchill Downs by J. Carlo in Drake. I haven't had, like, a Drake bop for a minute. Yeah, have you? But you know what's crazy? Because I was wondering, I was like, did I ever, like... We did so many episodes in L.A. Mm -hmm. that I'm like, did we talk about Future's album? I cannot remember. Me No, either. I don't think we did because it dropped while we were out there. It did, but I and can't remember. But it. remember we had ended up recording one extra day that we weren't supposed to. So I can't remember if on that day we discussed the I album. I we did a little bit. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, so yeah. So this is my bop of the week. It's like, you know, a little vibe or whatever. It's very reminiscent. It's Jack Harlow's song, but it's very reminiscent of like Drake songs when he be going on his little tangents, talk about how he that nigga. Right, but Jack actually referenced that. Because yeah. he said something in the song like, how does it feel that everything you touch turns gold or yeah. something like that. No, he said a lot of stuff that was kind of like, like... He was paying like yeah. homage to Drake, but I feel like mm -hmm. Jack Harlow, like he loved Drake. He loved Drake down. I mean, they're friends. No, but what I'm saying is from his style to how he raps, mm -hmm. people are wondering why Jack Harlow is so successful and why do y'all love his white men, this and that. I really feel like he's molding his career after Drake and there's mm. nothing wrong with that. Yeah. He's smart. If you see somebody that's successful, why would you not take their blueprint? Shit, we doing it. Because I'm we watching everything that the, the boys are doing and we trying, you know what I'm saying? I thought, oh, I thought she was about to say something else. I was about to say who? No, I was talking about 85, bitch. Because there's nobody else that we would mold this shit after. But what, I'm, but what I'm saying is, if you're a smart person and you're coming up after someone, the smart thing is with, to take their blueprint mm -hmm. and do it with your own twist and your own creativeness it's gonna work every time it's mm -hmm. gonna work every fucking time so i'm not gonna sit up here and say i'm a huge did you listen to the song i listened to the song i did and i, I like the song drake always i think drake is an amazing lyricist and i think that is, i think the reason drake is so successful because he's learned how to give you deep good lyrics that say something with fucking good hits because either somebody's gonna give you a fire hit with no depth in the lyrics, or they're gonna give you a song that's deep as fuck, but you can't listen to that shit. But he also just say a lot of shit that's relatable because right. at the end of the day, even though he's super successful and he's super rich at this point, I feel like he talks about feelings and emotions mm -hmm. a lot. And he talks about emotions and feelings that damn near everybody on this planet has experienced at least once in their life. And mm -hmm. I think that that's what makes him so relatable right. honestly um but i had asked about the future shit because you know the wait for you song yeah. on future album with Sample, drake and tim our queen tim yeah is um about mm -hmm. so and i loved it because you can't go wrong with a tim sample ever beautiful voice beautiful woman absolutely um but yeah um like i said i'm not a huge jack harlow fan but i actually liked the album it wasn't bad to me like i i, I see the vision yeah. I see where he's going. I mean, he had some hits with, like, a lot of, like, heavy-hitting yeah, people, though. Like, he I, had a song with Pharrell. He had a song with um, Justin Timberlake, which is crazy because we were just talking about Justin Timberlake. You read a <laughs> Shout out to JT. Yeah. I would like to see a Justin Timberlake comeback. I'm not going to lie. Nah, I, I wouldn't be mad at it. I wouldn't be mad at it. I would go to a concert. Facts. Imagine a tour with him and Usher. And Backstreet Boys. Ooh, I'm in that hole. Backstreets, back. But I think right. we should. But I think we should eliminate Usher. I think it should just be like, no. like that should be like a whole different type of R and B okay. tour. Like it should be like. I, no, that's what I'm saying. Backstreet Boys, Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, and, NSYNC, and then Britney. We can Britney, add Britney, Christina Aguilera. Facts, amazing tour. I yeah. want my check. But honestly, I feel like Usher. Cause we said it first. Yeah, Usher and Justin Timberlake can go on tour too. Do you know how fire that would be? That would be fire. Oh my god, that would be amazing. That would be really fucking mm -hmm. good. Shout out it to would. them. I love Usher because ever since that that video went viral, so they like the white and black versions of each other. They are. They really <laughs> are. Well, actually, like I was saying earlier, the blueprint Justin Timberlake. I really think like he saw the blueprint of Usher and was like, "I'm gonna do this, but with my twist." Because you know, really, yes, J Justin Timberlake is Usher reincarnated can we into add a Chris, white man. Can we add Chris Brown to that? Um, to, the, to the tour. Yeah, because I think what Chris Brown he's like did, the new. But he took them both yeah. together and he mixed the R&B and, you know, the pop mm -hmm. and, you know, he does both. But honestly, Justin Timberlake, 
is Usher, like I said, reincarnated to a white man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I, I feel agree. like I love it. I think it's amazing. And Justin Timberlake is a legend. Usher is a fucking legend. Like Thanks. you can't tell me nothing about. I will fight somebody behind Usher. All right. Well. Um, What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And y'all know I got $3, but let me tell y'all how I got six. okay? <laughs> we use an app called Get Upside. So, y'all know we are almost in a recession right now. Everything is expensive. Gas, groceries, mm-hmm. it don't matter where you at. Things are getting expensive. So, Get Upside is something that does cash back for you that's even better than a credit card. Yes, and all you have to do is get the Get Upside app and use our promo code Poor Minds. That's P O U R M I N D S, and you'll get five dollars off of your first purchase. Yes, users are saving million dollars a day, and compared to credit card and loyalty programs, you get three times more cash back with Get Upside. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna download the free Get Upside app and use our promo code Poor Minds, and you're gonna get five dollars or more cash back on your first purchase of ten dollars or more so make sure y'all download the get upside app and use the promo code poor minds start saving y'all some money because it's getting expensive out here okay now it's time to get into our favorite segment of the week <laughs> which is pour your heart out you know if you have any questions mm-hmm, that you would mm-hmm. like for us to answer for you or if you want to send a testimonial let us know how we helped you or how we fucked your life up mm-hmm. make sure you send it to askpoorminds at gmail.com that's a-s-k-p-o-u-r-m-i-n-d-s at gmail.com all right it says question one hi drea and lex i'm one of your younger listeners i am still in high school but i love listening to you guys because i feel like i can learn from what you guys are saying and apply it to my life i'm having some conflict in my life right now because everybody sees me as a funny person and i'm okay with that but when it comes to being serious nobody ever takes me seriously for example my friends are always having boy problems and i'll be trying to give them advice and put my two cents in the situation but it seems like they never listen to me I'm usually always right when it comes to the situation. So my question to y'all is, how do you make people take you serious while still maintaining to be funny? By the way, I love you guys and you guys are such an inspiration to me and keep doing what y'all doing because y'all are helping a lot of people. Um, Honestly, I feel like I've always had this problem in my life all around. Like, I'm not going to lie. I play a lot all day, every day. I joke. No, I don't take shit serious. But I've also had to surround myself around people who know when I'm not fucking playing. Like, I'm not going to lie. We had a situation in L.A. where I was annoyed and upset. And everybody was like, eh. And Lex, Andrea had to step in and be like, y'all, she going to be all right. Just leave her alone and give her 20 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I surround my people. I, I surround myself with people who understand me and get that about me. Like, because if I'm being serious and I'm, and I'm saying something to you and I mean it, um... I think you know, but I also, I have created boundaries. Like, I joke and I play all day, but when it comes to my business or certain situations, I it's I think it's like a tone in your voice. Like, you can let them know, like, hey, all right, all jokes aside, this is what I want, this is what I'm expecting, and this is what I think you should do. You know what I'm saying? So, I think that just comes with developing yourself, you know, as a person, as a woman. You're still young mm-hmm. and figuring things out, but I've had to navigate that space. But I don't want nobody around me who can't take me seriously and always takes me as a joke. It's a lot of people that probably just take me as a joke, but that's cool. Just don't be around me because not everybody wants to joke 24-7. Nobody wants to do that. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> I don't really got nothing to say because <laughs> niggas know I be serious. <laughs> don't play with me, period. Mm-hmm. But um, question number two. Hey, loves, I'm a Patreon member, and I first wanted to say that I love the show. I think you both are hilarious and just amazing, so I'm rooting for y'all. So I have a kind of random question. So I typically wear oversized shirts and mom jeans type of clothing. But recently, as I'm getting further in my 20s, I want to expand my wardrobe and dress a little bit more feminine. I'm 150 to 160 ish pounds, 5'4 with eyes and ass, and I think it's so hard finding comfortable but sexy clothes. However, I have been having a lot of trouble finding clothes that give me that look. But I think y'all give that energy of comfy and sexy. So I was wondering when you look for clothes, are there certain things you keep in mind, or you, or do you look for to give that to give you that look? Thank you in advance. Well, let me say first of all. You're 5'4", 150, 160-ish. You're not obese like us. You're just overweight. 
Damn. No, I'm just saying. We're obese. We is obese. But she fine. To me, 5'4", 150, 160, you fine. Yeah. So, that's what I'm saying. She's like, she has a nice body. I was being funny, so don't take that personal. Uh, bad joke. But, um, for me, I know when I look for clothes, I look things. I look for things that uh, complement what I like about my body. Because, to me, when I feel good, it exudes in my mood. Mm -hmm. So, I like things that, like, accentuate, you know, my bust line. Kind of squeezing my waist a little bit because, like I said, I've gained a little weight. My waist is not as small as it used to be. Um, and th things that let my butt breathe. I don't want nothing that squeezes in my butt because I like for my butt to, you know, give pull over that ass through fat. So yeah. I think you need to accentuate whatever you like about your body. And for me, I'm not a heels girl. If I do like, a I heel, love heels, but that's because I'm short. Like, yeah. so I feel like it like adds height, and then when you have height, it makes you kind of look a little more. Right. Slim. But, like, I'm, I'm a sneaker girl, and I like a cute flat. So, with that, like, I will find an outfit that I look super sexy but casual. I think that's my style. Like, I like to be sexy but casual. I mean, I feel like most of the time, like, I'm not really a jeans person. Like, I have jeans, mm -hmm. and I wear them sometimes. But I feel like jeans aren't really flattering if you're trying to be, like, sexy mm -hmm. most of the time. Yeah, I, you got to find, like, the right the thing. The right, yeah. I'm and not it's lie. only been, like, two companies that have had jeans over the years that I feel like are good for, like, curvy girls. And that's American Apparel and Top Shop. Mm, okay. And neither one of them are in the U.S. anymore. Wow. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think I wore jeans for the first time when we were in Nashville, and everybody was like, "Why do you have fucking jeans on?" Everybody was I mean, like, you "Never wear jeans." I never wear jeans, but they were really com comfortable. They were cute. Mm -hmm. They were like they made my body look good, and I liked them. So I feel like just accentuate whatever you like on your body and whatever makes you feel sexy. Because when you feel sexy, that confidence is gonna come out, and everybody else is gonna notice it, and you're gonna just feel better. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what we do. All right. Question three. You just read the last one? Okay. Hi, y'all. So, I need to know if this is weird. I grew up thinking this nigga was my cousin for so long. He used to be at all the family functions, B-Day parties, barbecues, dinners, just everything. I found out in my teens that he wasn't actually our family, just a friend of the family's son. As we got older, the family stopped getting together as much, and I haven't seen him in years. He recently hit me up on social media on how you been on, on some how you been type shit, but the conversation turned kind of flirty. We now talk pretty much daily. We live in different states, and he's been talking about moving closer to me. He's currently waiting on me to tell him when he can come see me, but I've been hesitant. This man is so fine, y'all. He makes you think of the singer Lloyd with the pretty hair. I'm talking gorgeous. On one hand, I want the dick, but I'm worried about whether my family will think it's weird that we're seeing each other if we actually end up dating. I know for a fact we are not related, but I thought we were for so long, so I'm really just conflicted. Should I leave the situation alone or just, alone, or just say, fuck it, we grown? Love y'all, by the way. Girl, that ain't your cousin. Yeah, like, that's the same thing. It ain't your cousin. Like, at the end of the day, and I think that's the problem with a lot of people. Like, once you become an adult, I don't understand why people be... I'm not... Let me not say I don't understand why. But who give a fuck what your family think? Like, it's your life. They decided to be friends. Y'all ain't had nothing to do with that. Yes, they don't have nothing to do with you. I feel like if you like him and y'all vibing and y'all got a good connection, why not talk to him? See, see where, where it go. go. Because especially now that you know that it's not your cousin. Because, girl, that's the most important part that it ain't your cousin. So, you sure? She said she's 100%. Okay, she well, so sure. since you sure, girl... Go see what that nigga does. Why not? I like it. Lloyd was fine back in the day. Exactly. Man. So if he look like Lloyd, I'm going. Period. Mm -hmm. Question five. Meet me on the south side. Question number four. Hey, Drea and Lex. I'm going to keep it short. My girlfriend and I are both, both bisexual women, and she wants to have a baby next year. I really don't know what to do about this situation. I told her I wouldn't mind her having a baby, and there are ways for that to happen. Here's my issue. She wants to actually have sex with a man and let him nut in her. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with that. I love her, but I told her if it was to happen that way, then we probably won't be together. I feel like I'm already compromising with her, saying that I wouldn't mind a baby, but she doesn't want to compromise with me. Girl, she wants some dick. <laughs> she want to feel that nut. She want to fuck. No, nah, I'm trying to fuck something. What Juski said. She want to fuck. She said, I want a man to fuck me and nut in me. Oh, she wildin'. 
She won't because at the end of the day, if you want a baby, like there's different methods to where you don't have to cheat. I mean, well, that's what she was saying. She told her, but she said she wants that nut though. <laughs> Put it in there. Oh, I'm dead. She, yeah, she wild. I'm not gonna lie. And since you're already compromising because it seems like you really don't want a kid, but you said you wouldn't mind. The compromise is her going like get in vitro or something like that. Like that's the compromise. But her wanting to fuck. You need to ask, is there some underlying issues? Because why do you have to fuck somebody? Because you do not have to fuck somebody to get pregnant Thanks. nowadays. So, yeah, I would I would raise my Maybe, eyebrow. But maybe also, playing devil's advocate, it's like she don't want to do the in vitro. Because, you know, with in vitro and shit, you have to, like, take them shots and all that stuff. And they be saying that she hurt. So maybe she just like, well, if ain't nothing wrong with me, I would just rather, like, do it the natural way. Okay. Because that's painless. <laughs> I mean, I would think there would be some like rules and regulations. So I agree with you. I'm just saying. Lord, if it's me, like, maybe he I'm could, gonna be standing right there. Or maybe he could like nut in a cup and then you use like a <laughs> a turkey baster. Yeah, something. Y'all gotta come up with something. Y'all gotta come up with like some it. other plan. Cause I ain't gonna lie, if that was my bitch, bitch, you ain't going fuck no nigga and let him nut in you. Right. You ain't doing it. That, that ain't what we on. Raw. He nutting me. We in love. We in love. You know <laughs> what I mean? I agree. So yeah, because we is. Yeah. Mm hmm. So uh, yeah. Find, figure that out. But yes, if you want your question answered on the show, email us at at gmail dot com. Mm -hmm. Um, thank y'all so much for tuning in, and we about to get into this track. This is your day. Shine on them hoes. <sighs> show them how. Show them how I raised you. Not I'm your son. <laughs> you my son. I'm your you, you want me to do the intro? Ah, uh, shit. Hold on. You got it? Yeah, I think so. I was trying to pull it up on my favorite little website because, you know, they be having all the, the best little lyrics. Like, accurate. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. I'm snapping for you with my weak ass. Snap. I had to get myself together. Yeah. These niggas prayed on my downfall. Yeah. These niggas prayed on my downfall. Yeah. On all 10, bitch, I stood tall. Yeah. Show these little niggas how to ball. Go get a thermometer for the pot. I need this shit cooked cook right. right. Let's get that water for her in the degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. You ever been inside a federal courtroom? Court Nigga, you ever went to trial and fought for your life? Yeah. Being broke did something, something to my, my spirit. spirit. Ask niggas to plug me to act like they couldn't hear me. Huh? Look at me now, driving German engineer. Y'all huh? want your baby mama fuck? Keep, Keep that hoe from near me. me. Care, boy. Yeah. I used to use them L's to hit the road. Hit the O and make them big boy sales move. Remember when you had them bring things mail with vacuum seals, trying not to have them bring things mail fail. So, zombie, what you know about related to money? I don't Yo. know nothing. I just used to see them walk to the county. I fuck with bitches. My body count with for purging the county. Any further trip? <laughs> Wait! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on, bitch! We had to pause because you killing that shit! I was stuck on Q Roy! <laughs> I was still on Kill Roy. Wait, I gotta finish it. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Any further questions, you can take it up with the lawyer. My nigga Finkel J Money, Bray Molo, Project Joe. Well, I, hold on, wait. <laughs> Never mind. Hey, you killed that shit. How you think I won best dress with no support? Uh -huh. Hasn't played lawyers coming in and out of court. Ain't uh -huh. doing it. Ain't the only a blessing. We made it at Kentucky after all that happened. Yeah. After the pre-trials, after the status, after the impact statements, after the castle. Hey, JR, nigga. Hey, ain't, ain't it a blessing? blessing? You won't see the next part. We made it after Lincoln, after all, all that, that happened. happened. After the Michigan State. After, why I can't get the words out? Joy Road, bitch, put the money long at six mile, brick mile, knock your bitch out, pick her up, pair her back down, pull her tracks out. Yes, I slap, girl. Yes, I slap, dog. Yes, I slap, dog. Yes, I slap, yes, I slap a pussy nigga if he acts out. Yes, I caught cases on the road with them killers, bro. Kill me. If you're sick, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> that's, the, that's the only part I know. If you kill it up, we'll snitch and snitch and kill you. That's the only part I know. My bad. So. Oh my God, bro. That's a good song. It is. Bro, I want to do that it song is. so bad because we used to be in the club. Drea go rap every motherfucking word. I know for a fact your bitch puts to get wet for a nigga. Plus, I do it You're better. Plus, I'm doing better than niggas. Yo, lady. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, like, what do you say, like? Killer, the choppers bust. But Yo, like. <laughs> hey, man. Thank y'all for tuning in. We'll see y'all next week. Bye, y'all. Now I'm a Detroit nigga. <laughs> you are. You I used to fuck up. with a Detroit nigga for a long time, And though. left no crumbs. <laughs> hey, boo. I miss uh, you. Right. No, you don't. I don't. <laughs> I'm lying. <laughs>